One of the most magnificent masterpieces of the jeweler's craft was a series of Easter eggs made by the firm called Fabergé between 1885 and 1917. Fifty-two splendid eggs of gold and jewels were made for the imperial family of Russia. As far as we know, forty-two of them are still in existence, and they are a marvel to behold. The first of these Fabergé Easter eggs was commissioned by Tsar Alexander III in 1885 as an Easter gift for his wife, the Empress Marie. Known as the hen egg, it is a gorgeous golden egg encrusted with jewels. But when the egg is opened, there is a surprise inside, a yellow yolk of gold. And inside that yolk is another surprise, a hen studded with jewels. When you open the hen, you find a further surprise, a tiny diamond replica of the imperial crown of Russia. Inside that tiny crown is a still tinier pendant of ruby, which could be taken out and worn then by the empress around her neck. She was so delighted at the gift that the Tsar commissioned Fabergé to make a new egg every year at Easter time. Even the Tsar did not know what shape these eggs would take. He left that completely up to Karl Fabergé. The only stipulation was that each of these eggs contain a surprise inside. The surprise may have been a portrait of a family member. One year it was a magnificent jeweled swan. Another time it was a mechanical elephant. It could be a replica of the imperial carriage or of one of the ships used by the Tsar. These are magnificent pieces of art, and each one contains hidden inside an even more wonderful surprise. Easter eggs have become a great part of our celebration of Easter. Not many of us own Fabergé eggs, but each of us has known some tradition of eggs at this time of year. In the eastern part of this country, we find the tradition of the Easter egg roll. It is still a popular tradition on this day on the White House lawn. In my part of the country, we never had an Easter egg roll, but we did have Easter egg hunts. We children would go out with our baskets and see who could find the most eggs. Before Easter, we spent delightful hours coloring those eggs in the most magnificent hues of the rainbow. I can remember my great-grandmother using the old, traditional way of dyeing the eggs red. She would boil them together with red onion skins. It was a delight for all of us to see. Children still participate in Easter egg hunts. Sometimes they hunt for real hard-boiled colored eggs, as we did in our day and sometimes plastic eggs, each containing a surprise. Easter eggs form a wonderful tradition this time of year. But the egg did not originate with the Christian celebration of Easter. Five thousand years ago, the ancient Sumerians and Egyptians would bury decorated ostrich eggs in the tombs of their loved ones, because they saw the egg as a symbol of new life. The egg may look hard and dead, but inside is the embryo of a new life. The Persian Zoroastrians of 2,500 years ago gave colored Easter eggs at their new year, which was connected to the spring equinox. 
This tradition has continued in Iran to our own days, no matter if the people are Zoroastrian, Muslim, or Jewish. It is a wonderful symbol of new life. The ancient Romans, too, gave gifts of eggs dyed red at the New Year. In the Jewish celebration of the Seder meal, one of the symbolic foods is a roasted egg. For thousands of years, the symbol of the egg has been used at this time of year. With the advent of Christianity, the egg took on a still deeper significance. The egg began to be seen as a sort of tomb. But that tomb contained life within it. It was sometimes seen to represent the stone covering the tomb of Christ. But behind that stone was life. In the old days, Lent was a period of fasting where you had to abstain not only from meat, but also from dairy products and eggs, anything that came from animals. We were the original vegans. During that 40-day period, you weren't allowed to touch eggs. But the hens kept on laying eggs, of course. And the people didn't want to waste the food, so they boiled the eggs and saved them up until Easter, when everybody had a big cholesterol feast. In Spain, there is a traditional Easter dish, monas de pascua, a bread holding a hard-boiled egg. One of my favorite dishes in Hungary at this time of year is called rokot krumpli, which is a casserole of sliced potatoes with sliced hard-boiled eggs. It was a question of not wasting what you had stored up during Lent. However our customs originated, the Easter egg has something to say to us. Let's look at that egg, not merely with the eyes of a glutton, but with the eyes of a poet. Let's allow that egg to speak to us. The egg really does resemble a stone covering a cave tomb, but there is life inside. There are times in our life when we find ourselves trapped inside a tomb and we see no way out. There are times when life becomes too colorful, sometimes bloody red. The Easter egg cries out to us, relax, roll with me. Don't be afraid of the colors, but marvel at them. The tomb trapping you inside your fear, your loneliness, your despair, keeping you from fully living. That tomb has walls that are eggshell thin. Burst out of your shell. Begin truly to live. The message of Easter is life. The Christ truly lives and lives inside of you. Rise up then and live and you will see that hidden inside there is always a wonderful surprise.